This is an example of how to do focus stacking in Chaos with multi-lapse. The first thing you'll notice in Chaos is the addition of the multi-lapse tab. Select the multi-lapse tab. Then we're going to want to check our runtime. Our runtime shows our move time, minimum delay, post moves, pre moves, move photos, delay, and exposure. The delay between frames, the exposure time, and obviously this is where you can tell it how many photos you want it to take uh, with the intervalometer that's built in. And that'll obviously affect your move time, the total time it takes uh, to record these shots. Now remember, if you're doing move photos, uh, it's going to be in triplicate when this is all done. So we're going to make sure multi-lapse is selected. In this case, we're going to use three axes. We're going to use focus, pan, and tilt. So first we're going to take our focus and we're going to check the parameters to see where infinity is, uh, where certain subjects are in focus in front of us. And in this case, we're going to mark, mark a keyframe at our close focus distance since we have a close subject. Then we're going to move our timeline to the end and we're going to mark a second keyframe. This consistent focus is going to be on our multi-lapse one. This will be our close focus version of this time lapse. Next, we're going to select pan. So we enable pan, and then we check our position of where we want it to start and where we want it to end. In this case, I don't want it to pan much, so I'm just going to do a, a small movement, and I'm going to mark a keyframe. And I'm going to make my adjustment. Again, I'm not doing a huge move, but you're going to drag your timeline indicator all the way to the end, make your adjustment, and then mark your next keyframe. And as you can see, there's a slight slope there because it's going to slightly pan from left to right. Last, we're going to do our tilt. So we're going to find our tilt position. I want this to start tilted down to, and then it's going to tilt up. So I got my down position. I mark my keyframe. I drag my timeline indicator to the end. And then I'm going to make my tilt adjustment. I'm going to have it tilt up. So I drag that and mark my keyframe. And as you can see, here's the slope from, from tilting down to tilting up. And then next, I'm going to enable all my axes. I'm going to go up into my multi-lapse tab and do a right click. And I'm going to copy move. And in this case, I'm copying move from multi-lapse one to multi-lapse two. And as you can see, it's the exact same thing I just shot. But the reason I do this is it saves you a lot of time because instead of adding all the keyframes again, we can just alter our focus in this case, or it can be iris or zoom. So we're going to make a, an adjustment here. I'm going to try to find my second subject and make sure that that's nice and sharp in focus. So I'm going to drag my motor slider and right about there. So the easy way to do this is just to right click on the keyframe and then you can move to motor position and that will automatically adjust your keyframe to that position. Then you just hit next and it's kind of cut off on the screen here, but you just do the same thing. Move to motor position, and you'll see it made a straight line across, meaning my focus will be consistent across this entire time-lapse move. And then we can re-enable our axes. And then we are going to do a copy move to multi-lapse three. It gives you a little warning in case you have anything in there. As you can see, it's the same thing again. So we're gonna do what we did before. We're going to select our focus and we're gonna find, in this case, our third subject and we're gonna get that into focus. I'm gonna scroll along. We see in our camera that that object is sharp. Right about there. And we're gonna select that keyframe by right click and we're going to move to motor position again. I'm gonna hit next, which will jump to our last keyframe. Click and we're going to move to motor position again. And as you can see, we got three different focus spots. Time lapse one, close. Time lapse two, a little further. Time lapse three, further away. And once we have these all set, we can go hit load. And this will prepare playback. And the next step is to hit go. And then you see it counting down, and the time lapse has begun. Down here, you can see the amount of frames that have fired and how many are remaining, the total time in percentage and the time remaining, and your playback time. Okay, we're gonna jump this video forward to the next step, and here the time lapse has ended. 
and we can see that there is no frames left and 220 frames fired and we can hit stop. Next, you're gonna go up into tools and you're gonna have your SD card inserted into your computer. You're gonna select sort multi-lapse photos, then select the folder where you've stored these. And here I'm gonna go to my SD card, which is untitled. And these are Sony files. I'm gonna hit open. And then you can see here folder count three it means sort. And there it says finish 222 total photos, which is exactly the number there should be. It's gonna open this up just to check title back to where I had this folder one all my photos are there folder two and folder three and you are now ready to put this into your system I'm going to show you three different examples first example focus is set on the jog wheel controller from Kessler second one is on our Scarlet W and our third pass is on our digital rev head in the background and Ben and here's a blend of the three where you can see the focus rack in between here I have my After Effects and I have my Multilapse 1, 2, and 3. And I also have a shape layer here, which I put around the focus knob. And this is just a rough mat, so just to give you an idea. And when you turn that one part into a shape layer, it allows you to keep multiple items in focus in the same time lapse. Here's a sample of that with the focus knob in focus, as well as the Scarlet W. And if I switch my layers around, you can see that I popped in layer 3, which is the furthest. And you can go back and forth and basically just comp out what you want. So it gives you more, more tools to work with for your time lapse. And that allows you to keep what you want in focus. This gives you more options. And you can do the same thing with Iris.